Good to go. The appointed hour of six o'clock having been reached, I welcome everyone to this meeting with the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Craig Meadows at the request of Steve Judge, chair of the Amherst Zoning Board of Appeals, who is unable to make tonight's meeting. I call this meeting to order as the acting chair. Pursuant to chapter 30, chapter 20, excuse me, of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No person, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings in real time via technological means. Additionally, the meeting recordings may be viewed via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel and ZBA website. Please indicate if you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when the public, when the public comment uh, is solicited. If you have joined the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your telephone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the Zoning Board of Appeals Chair. If speaking, if the speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be disconnected from the meeting. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40A and Article 10, Special Permit Granting Authority of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw, this public meeting has been duly advertised and the notice thereof has been posted and mailed to the party's interest. We'll begin with a roll call of the regular members of the ZBA. I'm Craig Meadows and here, Philip White, Present. Our associate members ZB of the ZBA, Sarah Marshall. Here. And David Sloveter. Here. Also in attendance are Rob Wachilla, planner and ZBA staff liaison, Rob Mora, building commissioner, and I don't see anyone else from the town. The Zoning Board of Appeals is a quasi-judicial body that operates under the authority of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for the purpose of promoting the health, safety, and convenience and general welfare of the inhabitants of the town of Amherst. One of the most important elements of the Amherst Zoning Bylaw is Section 10.38. Specific findings from this section must be made for all of the decisions. All hearings and meetings are open to the public and are recorded by the town staff. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the applicant application to the board during the hearing, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has completed its questions, the board will seek public input. The public speaks with the permission of the chair. If a member of the public wishes to speak, they should so indicate by using the raised hand function in their screen. The chair with the assist of the staff will call upon people wishing to speak. When you are recognized, please present your name and address to the board for the record. All questions and comments must be addressed to the board. The board will normally hold public hearings where information about the project and input from the public is gathered, followed by public meetings for each. The public meeting portion is when the board deliberates and is generally not an opportunity for public comment. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon the applications tonight. Each petition heard by the board is distinct and evaluated by its own merits, and the board is not ruled by precedent. Statutorily, for a special permit, the board has 90 days from the close of the hearing to file a decision for variance, the board has 100 days from the date of the filing to file its decision. No decision is final until the written decision is signed by the sitting mem board members and is filed by the town clerk's office. Once the decision is filed with the town clerk, there is a 20-day appeal period for an aggrieved party to contest the decision with the relevant judicial party body in the Supreme Court. After the appeal period, the permit must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds to take effect. Tonight's agenda will be, first, the road call, which you had, 
approval of the minutes from December 14th, 2023, the public hearing, which will uh, discuss ZBA FY 2024-7, Gabe Kraus, Gabe's Underground, rec request for a special permit under the sections 3.352.3. 5.041 and 5.042 of the zoning bylaw to create an establishment consisting of a restaurant and a nightclub with pre-recorded entertainment, two patio areas for outdoor dining and a total capacity of 300 occupants. Located at 23-25 North Pleasant Street, map 14A, partial 50, general business. Zoning district, and DRB and MPD overlay districts. Continued from 12, 14, 23. There'll then be a public meeting, discussion, general public comment period, other business not anticipated within 48 hours, and then adjournment. The first order of business tonight is the minutes, approval of meeting minutes from December 14th, 2023. Has everyone on the board had the chance to review the previous minutes? Okay. Are there any comments or edits that are needed for the minutes? I knew it. Yes, Sarah. Well, I didn't want to disappoint you. <laughs> oh, thank you. I so appreciate it. <laughs> so near the bottom of page two, the first bullet under discussion, uh, which is about a comment I made, uh, the first line, Rob, would you delete the if that is at almost the end of the first line before everyone? Because you already had an if earlier in the sentence. Do you see where I mean? Yeah. Okay. And at the end of that same paragraph, um, no one under the age of 21 is allowed please, not R, and that's all. Thank you. Very good, are there any other comments? Okay, if there are none, then I would entertain a motion to approve the minutes from December 14th, 2023 with the edits that Sarah so kindly provided. Is there a- uh, so, so moved. Very good, is there a second? Back I'll second. Up. Thank you. Uh, the vote requires a roll call. The chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Mr. Ma Ms. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. Very good, unanimous. The minutes are approved as amended. Okay. We now have ZBA FY 2024-7, Gabe Kraus, Gabe's Underground, located at 23-25 North Pleasant Street. Members sitting on this panel are myself, Mr. White, Ms. Marshall, Mr. Sloviter. Are there any disclosures? No disclosures. The following updated submissions have been received by the town staff. Management plan updated 11024. Uh, and also, Building Commissioner Rob Moore and staff liaison Rob Wachilla met with the applicant on January 9th, 2024, to discuss the soundproofing suggestions with the applicant. Would either Rob, uh, either Rob, yes, indeed, <laughs> like to update the board on this meeting? Yeah, sure. I can do it very briefly. Um, so me and Rob Moore met with the applicants last Tuesday uh, just to give like a general walkthrough of what's been done so far and kind of um, suggest what can be done in the meantime before the 20 day appeal period ends if it were to move forward. In terms of soundproofing, we did look at the existing nightclub side um, and we made some suggestions for film that could be placed over the window um, in the nightclub portion and then some suggestions for some thicker doors. Uh, Rob Moore, I don't know if you want to add anything else from our um, visit with the applicants. Yeah, I don't think it was uh, probably not changing the doors, but just, you know, working on closing up the gaps, weather stripping and sealing that up. That Those little things do make a difference. 
the entire northern wall is an exposed brick wall inside the establishment. Uh, the applicant, you know, would like to have that retained for the the look inside the nightclub. So there really weren't too many options about adding another material on the wall that would help. So I think, you know, focusing on the door, which is typically our problem area, any of the openings in the glass transmit the noise more than any of the other uh, parts of the structure would probably be the, the place to start. And then, you know, we can then uh, monitor the noise at the property line to make sure the decibel readings are proper if there's ever, a, you know, an issue. Very good. Uh, who's representing the applicant on this matter? So they were just here, but I think their computer froze or they lost connection. Oh. Yeah, so they might be back yes. very shortly. Sarah? Yes, so while while we wait for them, <laughs> um, it, it looks like there were some other updated submissions, if this red, this red uh, typing is to be believed. Some so, updates. Um, just to clarify, so those yep. um, updates were also um, materials that were received after this project application report was given to the board members. So the updates that you're talking about are the two updates that were done to the plans prior to the previous meeting, but were given to me after the packets went out to the board members. So that's why that text is in red, just to show that that was the language that was different from the previous project application report that you guys had. So I apologize for the confusion, but as of right now, the only updated materials that we did receive from the applicant was the management plan. But are you saying the members may or may not have seen those updates? So before the, the previous so the meeting? version that you have um, now in your possession, or at least from the last meeting packet, is the most up to date of their plans. So the reason why I included those other updates in there was because um, just to record for the public record that there were previous versions that were given to us as staff for review. Um, so Mr. Chair, I do have uh, Reese Deshays, who I believe is with the applicant raising their hand. Is it okay if I make them a panelist so they can um, explain what's going on with the applicant? Yes, please. All righty. Hi, um, I just received a message from Gabe. He is having technical difficulties with the computer. They did lose connection, but they're currently working on getting their connection back so that they can rejoin. Okay, do you want to go over any of the issues uh, with us at this point before they I get on? I absolutely can, yeah. I can answer to the best of my ability from my side of everything, absolutely. So um, the applicant is back. So I'll promote okay. them to panelists. Let me get this sorted out. Mr. Mr. Marshall, Chair, can I note they could perhaps part just phone in if necessary? Is, would that no, they're, be an option? They're, they're back. OK. Sorry about that. We had a little something, some kind of computer glitch. <laughs> How unusual. <laughs> Could you state your, state your name and address, please? My name is Andrea Hunter, 142 South Long Yard Road in Southwark, Mass. Okay. Gabe Krause, 252 Elm Street in Westfield, Mass. And Reese, since you're already here. Yes, um, I'm Reese Deshays, and I am 44 Beltertown Road, Amherst, Massachusetts. Very good. Uh, whom is presenting now? Uh, you're, you're apparently muted. Sorry, we, we missed the question, unless you want us to kind of start from the beginning. Could you start from the beginning, please? Sure. Yes. Um, okay. Our concept is a bar and grill with um, an eating section. Um, the bar is basically decided up, uh, divided up into two sections. The We have the um, the dining side with um, on the other end, there'll be some pool tables. There'll be um, one or two arcade games where people, this is the side where people can, they can eat, they can drink, um, play pool. 
And the other section um, will have a dance floor, a bar, and people can order food on that side as well. So, I mean, that's that's the concept. Um, oh. Did you want me to go over the changes we made? Yes, go ahead. please. Okay. Um, last time we were talking about um, a you needed a more detailed emergency plan, um, which in the in the um, revised management plan, um, I can read that section unless unless everybody read it. Would you like me to uh, read it? Okay. Uh, yes. All right. In case of fire or other emergency, the fire department can access the business from North Pleasant Street through the narrow alleyway next to Antonio's Pizza or the alley from the main, from Main Street. That one is a lot wider. It's next to Crazy Noodles. And I believe it's a, on the other side, there's a um, chicken um, barbecue type of place. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, it's much wider, but I mean, the fire department can make that decision as to which way they want to go. Um, and the D, the DJ or and or the staff will be instructed to announce over uh, the microphone or if the or with a megaphone if the music is cut off um, due to you know the way the sound system is set up and everything on that side of the business um, is connected to the fire alarm, so it is um, supposed to shut down everything, shut shut down the music um, if the fire alarm goes off. Yeah. Um, in which case, if the microphone is not going to work, we would use a megaphone. Um, the DJ would have a megaphone at his booth. And for patrons to, the instructions would be for the patrons to proceed calmly to the exits. Bouncers will usher patrons to the exit doors, which will have lighted exit signs above them and are easily passable from indoors. Bouncers outdoors on the patio and outside the awning entrance will instruct patrons to exit the premises away from the parking lot and guide them along the sidewalk towards Kellogg Street. Um, that will keep them, if they head towards Kellogg Street, that'll keep them out of the parking lot. It'll keep them away from those two alleyways so that the fire department will have um, free access. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, so that firefighters or other emergency crew will have a clear passage and patrons will be kept safe and out of the way. Okay, um, mm -hmm. the next section has to do with managing patrons. That was the other thing that um, we talked about last time. So I'll go into that section. <clears throat> um, oh yes, the hours. Hours of operation are simply um, for the entire establishment it's simply Sunday through Saturday, 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. Um, the next section has a lot of revision and some additional items. Managing patrons. On slow nights, Sunday through Wednesday, only one to two bouncers will be necessary monitoring, monitoring patrons. Uh, on busy nights, Thursday through Saturday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there will be a minimum of seven bouncers. Bouncers will be assigned zones, specific areas of the establishment for which they will be responsible. One bouncer will be assigned the pool table and dining area. One bouncer at the overhang entrance. One bouncer in the red floor hallway. We call it red floor hallway because it's a red floor uh, between the two main sections. Two bouncers in the dance floor area. Two bouncers at the awning entrance and two bouncers outside the awning entrance. Bouncers at the entrances will be checking IDs and bouncers, oops, bouncers will monitor the crowd for the potential of a fight or dispute, mistake, um, and attempt to defuse any situation that could escalate. If a patron refuses to calm down or continues to be disruptive and cause harm, they will be escorted to the door and banned from the bar. The police will be called at the discretion of the security staff. In addition, bouncers will continuously monitor the capacity levels in all areas, um, the dining area as well as the dance floor area. 
um, to ensure that the total capacity does not exceed 300 people. Bouncers at the overhang and awning entrances will each have handheld counters and be in contact with each other via walkie-talkie as patrons leave or enter in order to keep an, keep an accurate capacity count. Um, managing patrons at the entrance, Sunday through Wednesday, 3, to, 3 p.m. to 12 a.m. Um, that's what we're calling the slow nights. And Thursday through Saturday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., patrons will enter through the overhang entrance. That's the entrance um, underneath the hours will be clearly posted on the door. On event nights, for example, if a DJ is coming in Thursday, Friday, Saturday, from 7 p.m. until 12.15 a.m., patrons will enter through the awning entrance only. This is so we can um, make sure that uh, with large crowds, we can um, check IDs, we can make sure no one is taking in weapons and so forth, and um, to keep everybody organized. The overhang entrance will be locked from the outside and a sign on the door at the overhang, overhang entrance will direct patrons to use the awning entrance. At the awning entrance, hours will be clearly posted in the window. Uh, those patrons who arrive before 7 p.m. from the overhang entrance and who wish to go to the dance floor section, those people who are already in, will be checked for weapons and property, proper ID by security staff located at the hallway egress to the dance floor area. <clears throat> On Thursdays through Saturday, starting at 7, patrons will be required to line up, that's if they have not arrived, line up in an orderly fashion within the boundaries of a retractable belt barrier um, in front of the awning entrance. I mean, not directly in front because of the clearance, um, but in that area. Re okay, you have to refer to the floor plan to see it. Um, the barrier will be set up so patrons can be gathered out of the way of pedestrians. Spillover patrons who do not fit in the queue will be instructed and monitored by security staff to maintain a straight line as they enter the queue. The awning doors will be closed except for the passage of patrons when the music is playing to reduce noise level outside the building. Security staff will be positioned inside the entrance and outside the entrance, monitoring the crowd outside the awning, um, outside under the awning. Bouncers will be checking IDs of patrons as they enter. IDs will be checked by scanner and magnifier light. Bouncers will be monitoring patron capacity with a handheld counter. Small signs at the barrier will direct patrons to enter here, meaning the, um, the barrier at the awning. Bouncers will also be checking patrons for weapons, brass knuckles, nips, etc. Patrons can exit through the overhang entrance door and the awning entrance at any time during operating hours. Um, there will be bouncers at the do those doors all doors will be clearly marked as to whether it is an acceptable entrance or exit. During operating hours, bouncer will be monitoring the patrons as they leave. I'm in the section where it says monitoring, monitoring, managing patrons as they leave. Um, to ensure that, that they comply with Massachusetts laws regarding alcohol beverages, as well as making sure they leave in an orderly manner, you know, without making a lot of noise and that sort of thing. Capacity chan changes will also be monitored by bouncers. Last call will be announced at 12.25 a.m. by the DJ on busy nights and by the bartenders in both the dining and dancing sections. If there is no DJ music entertaining that evening, the bartenders will be responsible for announcing the last call. Bouncers and the manager will ensure the patrons leave before 1 a.m. Um, okay, that covers the, the two main things that we talked about last time. No question. Rob? <clears throat> I was going to ask, because we, um, me and Rob Moore were reviewing the management plan earlier today and noticed um, the last call time. So was it meant to be 1225 a.m. instead of 1245? Or is that 
Was that correct and accurate? It's meant to give people enough time to um, finish their drink before they leave at one. Okay, so 12.25 a.m. is the correct last call time then. What do you think? Well, yeah. so as I think as we discussed um, the last meeting, 2 a.m. is when um, that's you, that's when everyone needs to be out of the bar. They just can't be served after 1 a.m. is what is the requirements in Amherst. I, from my understanding. Okay, but um, so I guess, so 12.25 a.m. is the time that you guys are okay with having as your last call. So anytime after that, nobody can get drinks anymore. Um, let's see. We'll do, yes. Um, yeah, 12.25 a.m. Okay. I just want to note that because, Mr. Chair, in one of the conditions, we have it listed as 12.45 a.m. I saw that. So when we get to that, we could definitely change it to reflect the time that the applicants put down. Okay. Uh, I have a few questions before I get to you, Sarah, if you don't mind. Please, go ahead. Uh, um, one thing, in, in this year, you're committing to seven bouncers during your, what you call your busy period. Um recognizing the fact that people uh, get sick, people take vacations, et cetera. Do you have plans to cover to make sure that you have those seven bouncers? Reese wants, uh, yeah, yeah, wants to comment. Yeah, so um, as far as um, the hiring process for the specific location, um, we are hiring an abundance of security staff that are all going to be trained as such um mm -hmm. there's going to be abundance though where we're going to have a pool of people that we are able to call in if necessary so say we do run into a situation of three four bouncers also all being sick at the same time we are going to also have three to four people on standby that we are able to call in so you will stick with the seven yes at all times okay yes and how about um there are you, you probably recognize that in Amherst there are occasions, and I think of St. Patrick's Day particularly, where uh it may not be a Thursday through Sunday, but still is extremely busy. Uh do you want to include some of those holidays that that the students seem to get excited about? Yes, those um this is just a, a basic template. Sunday through Wednesday, starting out, we're assuming it's going to be slow. Thursday through Saturday, we're expecting it to be busy. But um, as the specific holidays come up, um, we're going to adjust for those. We're going to okay. plan for those staff-wise. So perhaps we could adjust this, Rob, so that it includes um, the holidays that we we we're aware of that the students like to participate in. So I guess um, when I'm we get to that part, so I think it's one of the conditions that we listed too for hours of operation. Um, so I guess when we get to that condition, Mr. Chair, we can add that or modify that condition to include that language. Um, yes, please. All right. Okay. Uh, another thing uh, that, that's unrelated to what you, I noticed that for snow removal, you were talking about the staff will be removing the snow. Uh, I'm assuming the staff does not get in at seven o'clock in the morning. Um, could you? Sorry. Right. So I, I think it, it might be advisable instead of suggesting that you would call on the other, that you have uh, a permanent arrangement with a landscaping firm or a snow removal firm to remove snow as early as, you know, typically let's say seven o'clock in the morning so that there's a pathway by uh, the establishment to get to either of the alleys that are adjacent to it. Um, in our management plan, it says that as an alternative, we will be working with Busy Bee Landscaping for snow removal. Okay. Um, but it, it's all gonna depend on when the snow comes in, when it's piling up. Uh, we don't have too much of a problem under the overhang. Um, but um, as a backup, we have busy bee landscaping. Okay. 
Well, if you, you can make sure that they're engaged for snowstorms that occur overnight uh, or during the day so that you don't have to call staff in at seven o'clock in the morning to shovel the snow. I'm sure that Reese doesn't want right. to get out <laughs> at that point. Those were my questions. Sarah, you, uh, yeah, you're you the first sure. one to raise your hand. Thank you. So um, under managing patrons, the first paragraph where you talk about the bouncers, you say there will be a minimum of seven, but then you enumerate them and they add up to nine. So do you really mean that you will have a minimum of seven? I mean, excuse me, of nine. And if you do mean seven, which are the two <laughs> positions that you list in that paragraph that will not be filled? Um, no, it would be Thursday through Saturday, it would be a minimum of seven on the busy nights. But you outline, but then you specify seven different bouncers. One in the pool table, one in the overhang, one in the red floor hallway, and then two each in okay. three other locations. So that's nine. That That is um, for the busy nights. So you'll have a minimum of nine <laughs> on busy nights. No, um, no, it should be a minimum of seven. So then which, which, I was gonna say, which um did you find that language in the in the mansion plan? I'm looking, it's highlighted. I'm she yeah, um, the first, first she read it out loud. Be a minimum of seven bounce bouncers will be assigned zones, et cetera, et cetera. One to the pool table and dining area, one at the overhang, one in the red floor hallway, that's three, two in the dance floor area, five, two at the awning entrance seven and two outside that's nine yeah from what it sounds like it it, it looks like there might be four bouncers outside of the awning entrance or at least at or outside of it directly it, was that put in there intentionally or well or it says a minimum of about seven bouncers okay. um so yeah, I mean nine would be fine, but it's your it's your plan. I don't understand if it's if you only have seven, which of those positions that are then listed are not going to be filled by one of those bouncers because you list nine positions. So if we only have seven, then we would only put one bouncer. We would take away two of the bouncers in those areas that. So we would only put one in each. Um, one standing in the awning area and then one standing um, in the awning entrance, like the awning entrance and then the overhang. Um, and then if it's, if we feel like we need to add more, we'll add more, but seven was our kind of our minimal, um, like our minimum, uh, re, you know, expectation for us. Well, that that's fine, but I think then you need to match. <laughs> so I would say change that two bounce, bouncers at the awning entrance to one and two outside to one. Okay. And that's seven. Rob, Rob. You can add, add more if you need them. So I guess, um, can I make a suggestion, Mr. Chair? Yes, please. So I guess, you know, any um, updates that the board uh, brings up with the management plan, um, Andrea and Gabe, you should probably take those down and then submit those changes to the board after the fact, uh, just so we have the most completed update document with the edits that were suggested from the board tonight. So I guess from what sounds like, instead of having two in those places, you could mention at least one, just so the number and the math adds up to seven as your minimum. Um, and the, the reason for this is because the board's gonna expect and hold you to that on those busy nights, no matter what, you're gonna have at least seven people bouncing at the establishment. Now, my what I have to say to that is, let's say let's say it's not as busy as we expected. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm definitely not going to be 
paying bouncers to stand around and do nothing. It's say we have, instead of 300 people showing up to fill both capacities, maybe we have 100 people show up one night. I'm not going to have seven bouncers for 100 people. So the, on a busy night, if it's if it's a busy night, I understand the literature says um, Thursday to Saturday, busy night, um, you know, we'll have a minimum of seven and we can add to that if we feel like we need to. But if it's going to be, if it ends up being slower, am I going to be penalized for not having seven bouncers? If it's say, you know, November, November, whatever it is before Thanksgiving. And I have, you know, let's say I have four bouncers instead of seven because the crowd, we cut three bouncers early because the crowd that's showing up wasn't as big as we had expected. I think if you, if you want to do that, then you need to, you need to make a change to the management plan. Okay. Well, because right now, oh, sorry, go ahead. Right now you're indicating seven as a minimum. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and to the point of Ms. Marshall, uh, you need to make a change to the numbers indicated where they are, but you also have to indicate that if you're going to have a slow night, you, you're, you're not going to stick to the minimum of seven. And then we have to decide whether that's viable or not. I think on a business basis, it makes sense. I think it might help if busy and slow were not defined as days of the week, which is is the only definition so far, and rather refer to numbers of patrons. Because right now you have no wiggle room. You're defining a busy night as Thursday to Saturday, and you're going to have a minimum of seven. If it's well, we'll, really what we'll do, we'll, we'll we'll make it. We'll leave it at seven um, as our minimum, um, no matter what, just so that it's you know that it's stated and it's clear. Um, we'll, we will stick to that in our plan and um, have that be the minimum. Well, I'm not advocating okay. that you that you waste money, just that maybe you <laughs> elaborate a little bit on more on what you mean by slow or busy. Can I go on, Mr. Chair? I have some more questions about this. Of course. Thank you. The end. So the end of that paragraph, it seemed to just just break off. Bouncers at the entrances will be checking IDs and I wonder yeah. if you if you also meant weapons and nips so that the people who come at patrons who enter from th that way are checked to the same degree as the people who've come in through the awning. It does state that in the um, patrons at the managing patrons at the entrance section. Um, it, I believe I made a typo because it does say that in the um, the managing patrons at the entrance section. Well, it refers to the overhang at the, the end of that paragraph. Those who, <clears throat> sorry, well, um, okay. All right, um, about the emergence, let's see, the emergency plan. I think one thing we discussed last time um, was our concern that patrons might uh, flee up the narrow alley and that that's a, a trampling hazard or whatever you call. So so I, I, I would like or I would suggest that the emergency plan um, say not just that the bouncers will guide the patrons, you know, towards Kellogg Street, but they will prevent them from entering that alley because I think that's I think that's a dangerous condition. That's it. I, I assume you're you're saying under conditions of uh, a fire hazard. Well, whatever the emer emergency is, I mean, it could be it could be you know someone comes in with a gun. You don't want people, you know, fifty people cramming into that small alley, even if even if they're not firefighters trying to come the other way. It's just it's just extremely narrow and it doesn't seem safe. Yeah, that's why um, I, I put in that section because I realized that the narrow alleyway and or the um, the main street alleyway 
could right. become, you know, unsafe for patrons. So that's why we added um, that, um, you know, the, the bouncers will be guiding them towards the Kellogg Street direction along the sidewalk because, um, you know, it's in the opposite direction, direct opposite of those two alleyways and would be safe mm -hmm. for them. Well, I think the bouncer should understand why why it is important that they not allow patrons to go up the alley. Okay. I, well, that, that would happen they, during training. Oh, Reese has. Reese. Yeah, just to add on to that, um, the bouncers, even in our other location in Westfield, and this is the same exact plan that we have in Amherst, we run emergency drills regardless of fire or any other circumstance in which they'll be instructed on how to go about that. So they will be fully informed that those two alleyways are not an appropriate exit for the patrons. So they will be fully informed as to where they need to be guiding the patrons to and what to prevent them from going to. All right, thank you. That's all. Mr. White. Uh, thank you. Um, so I just have kind of two things that I might be I'd ask for a little bit more clarification on. Uh, so going back to the last call, uh, am I to understand, so last call will be at 1225, and then there will be no more alcohol served at 1 p.m., correct? Yes. Yeah, 1 a.m., yeah. Okay. Um, when will drinks, okay, when will everyone be asked to leave? I think um, one because so um in my to my understanding um we would we would start if if nobody people can still reside in the business um after after one but cannot be purchasing alcohol um we will start asking people to leave um around you know in the 130 range Reese um what was your thought on that um I think that the most appropriate thing to do I mean as far as what we do at the second location also is we do stop serving pri prior to the actual end of serving hours in Westfield because it makes the patrons leaving plus our lives, just making sure everybody is out of the building by the appropriate time. Um, it makes it a lot easier. So I believe we'll probably stop um, serving at a specific time before one o'clock and then have everybody start exiting at one o'clock just so we can get everything done in an appropriate time manner. Um, Cause it's really not feasible to suggest that drinks are completely done at one, but you have no, a full yeah. drink and get out at one o'clock. Um, so yeah, the, the absolute stopping of serving alcohol will be happening before 1 a.m. Um, and then the patrons will be asked to depart at 1 a.m. Okay. Um, and the reason why I asked for the clarification on that is, you know, and we touched on this during the site visit. Myself, personally, I worked in restaurants for years, managed bars, designed bars, set them up. Um every bar that i've ever established anything longer than a 20 minute interval from last call to when you stop serving just entices over serving especially in a very packed busy environment where your bartenders last call is already a nightmare but if you're doing a 35 minute long last call that's going to entice people who maybe have already had a few drinks to try to pound as many as they can get in that time frame, um, that's why I was a little confused by that. But if you're going to stop serving before one, then that would make a little bit more sense. Uh, but yeah, that's why I was a little confused on that because yeah, that tends to be the habit of individuals at last call because the whole thought in a bar when you're drinking is, oh no, we can't get alcohol anywhere else. We need to pound as many drinks as we can, and 35 minutes is a lot of time to pound drinks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the yeah, in that in that management plan, we'll stick with our twelve twenty-five. Um, and then to you know the bartenders and Reese's discretion. Um, you know, we're not gonna 
we're not going to, I'd say probably, you know, using their best judgment with individuals as per the, um, uh, the tip certification that they will all have, um, they will monitor who, um, you know, everyone, every person they give a drink to. And, um, you know, I'm very certain they're going to all just give whoever comes up um, until the, that last minute that, you know, we will allow to everyone to be served. Um, it, it won't be more than just one, it'll, it, or it will be just one drink for the people that can make it. As someone, like I said, who worked in bars for a decade and closed those bars over 4,000 times, I, I do have a little bit of apprehension with, you know, kind of buying into that because, like I said, I know what a nightmare last call is. No, absolutely. Busy establishment. Yeah. Um, but kind of moving on to my next concern, uh, which is going to the bouncers. Um, the seven bouncers, um, as a business owner, as someone who ultimately, you know, wants to make a profit. Um, the wording on that does concern me a little bit because like, I'll just give, you know, an example, um, since we're going by days as defining what's busy and what's not where the nightclub will be in operation, uh, in situations where maybe it's off season and it's a night where we've deemed it to be busy, just strictly off of the night termination. There are going to be nights where there are 20, 30 people on that side. So you're going to have a bouncer for every three patrons. Like that doesn't seem financially feasible. No, and and like, no, I, and I, I completely, I agree with you. Um, but the, you know, it's, it's, it's how it is in Westfield. We, we adjust, like I, I will, I'll have a scheduled um, group of bouncers to come in. Um, the manager will, you know, at a certain time, he will make a decision, you know, once we know that, like, we've done this, you know, repetitiously many, many times, we'll know that um, for that specific night in that part of the year, um, we can, you know, we can firmly say, okay, we'll be safe with, you know, getting rid of one bouncer and sticking to what we have uh, currently you know, also having those, um, those crowd managers, um, at, you know, still, they're all crowd manager certified, but, you know, making sure that we have enough to cover that, um, group of people that is there, um, will be our, you know, our biggest, uh, you know, our biggest focal point in that, in that regards. Um, but if it, and, it, and I agree with you, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, 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 you go, go right. Yeah. And I agree with you. Um, like I said, I mean, the most feasible way to run an operation like this is, of course, you have your scheduled staff, you plan for a busy night. And if that's not what's delivered, then you cut as oh, yeah. is needed. Um, but that's not the way the language is current. Okay. The way the language is currently is seven bouncers. Okay. And I don't see how, you know, if you had... I'll just make it a round number in the fact that it's 21. If you had 21 bar patrons and seven bouncers, that's one bouncer for every three patrons. Yeah. From a bit, you know, and I'm not by no means trying to tell you how to run your business, but I know how to run these businesses and that's not a way to make a profit. No, definitely not. No. We will, yeah, we will readjust that wording so that, um, you know, in the cases of nights that, you know, we've, we've staffed it to, what we would expect it to be. And it turns out to be um, a lot slower than we will, um, you know, we'll, we'll verb it in a way where it's, we're making um, uh, staff cuts. So that way we can, you know, come out on top of the profit for the evening. I think um, just my two cents, I would agree with Ms. Marshall um, that a much more feasible way to probably do it would be to base the number of bouncers off the number of patrons um, at set times. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. That's all I, I've got. I, I, just to continue with that, I, I, you, you certainly will find that those periods of school vacation, you're, you're empty. Uh, it, Ms. Marshall and I drive by the spoke all the time 
and uh, during school vacations, there's no one in there. So I don't think you're going to be any less more any busier than they are during school vacation periods. So I, I think you may have to indicate some exceptions to uh, that the rule of seven or else you're you're, you're boxing yourself in. Yeah, no, I've I've heard I've heard from many, um, many business owners that in town that um, the summertime, it dies out. Um, Christmas break, it dies out. It's usually only when the students are in town that there uh, seems to be a, uh, a strong following. So um, we can we will verb it in a way that, that um, it will will staff um, according you know to the time of year. And, um, on those, on those times that where it's, where it does get, you know, where the students go home, um, we will, you know, adjust it accordingly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Slovodar, you were next. Okay. I'd like to get some clarification on a few things involving hours of operation and which side will or will not be open. Your plan states that, I want to make sure I get this right, I'm juggling something here, that the hours of operation Sunday through Saturday, 3 p.m. to 1 a.m. So that's every day. And then you identify, you make a distinction between busy and slow um, nights. Do you, have you decided that the club side will be closed on the slow nights or will both sides be open every night, every day and night? Both sides open. Both sides open all the time. But it also says in here, under managing patrons at the entrance, Sunday through Wednesday... Patrons will enter through the overhang entrance. Mm -hmm. Sunday through Wednesday, 3 a 3 p.m. until midnight-ish. And Thursday, 3 to 7, patrons will enter through the overhang entrance. So if the... Yet, I think I remember that if the... If both sides are open, the overhang entrance will be closed and entrance will be through the awning side where people will be uh, have their IDs checked for their age. This also brings up one other one. I might as well ask it now so that we can, so I can get all these out. On the restaurant side, are you going to permit um, underage people who come in with let's say a parent or someone older, or will will anyone under 21 simply never be allowed on either side? I thought I remember from the last hearing that when it is slow, that um, people will come into the restaurant and play pool and watch things and do whatever, and that younger people would be allowed in if they were accompanied by a parent or something. If, a, you know, if, a, if parents want to go in and get bar food and have a beer and shoot pool, would they be allowed to bring their teenagers in with them? In which case they are then in the building. And I don't understand the flow. So my understanding is mass state law you cannot allow, you can't have, um, you know, under 18 or um, under 21 persons um, in, 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 a a, bar. in a bar. And oh, okay. um, I, I know in, in Connecticut, you can have, I know we're, it's kind of just, you know, just on a tangent, but Connecticut has laws where you, if you're 18, you can have a wristband um, over or like on 18 plus, you can have a wristband and still be in the bar. But um, in, you know, from my experience, we in Westfield, I've I just don't allow anyone under 21 that, um, you know, in the bar at any time. I think with different licenses, like, say, an Applebee's, 
um, you can you can drink there. It's it's a restaurant, but um, it's they're mainly centered around being a restaurant. We're mainly centered around being, you know, a fun bar, you know, dancing, drinking, you know, pool playing like atmosphere that doesn't really we do serve food, but it's not to the capacity of, you know, like a, you know, a like a chain restaurant that right. has a liquor license. So any question that I had about uh, controlling the movement of a potentially underage person from the restaurant side to the club side is not a reason for concern because there won't be anybody under 21 anywhere on the premises. Correct. Oh, okay, good. Then that's yes, okay. So have you decided on slow nights? Are you going to... Re is? Is the club side going to remain open? Um, so club, um, so slow nights, we will have, um, you know, we'll, we'll have a, you know, an ex, an extra bouncer there as needed. Um, but it's, we're just, we're going to be mainly just focusing on the, um, the side that, because I know I understand there's, there's alcohol, there's, um, that's still over there we could take precautions and just remove the alcohol from that room. Um, and uh, that way, you know, if people do end up um, going over to that side, they're not, you know, it's more so just kind of standing room. It's not necessarily, um, we can still play music, but we won't necessarily be serving um, beer and liquor over on that side. As, as opposed to just closing it. If you have, I'm going back to something that Mr. White mentioned. If you if there are 20 people in the on the club side on a Tuesday, are you really going to stay open till one in the morning with 20 people? It it all um it like I said, it'll it'll depend on um and I can you know I can, I can verbalize it again with with kind of piggybacking it with the uh the seven bouncer um scenario. Um, we will, we'll approach each night, um, as, you know, like if, you know, from a safety standpoint, first being, um, first and foremost, but also a, um, you know, a, a financial standpoint of, do we really need X amount of bartenders and X amount of, um, bouncers, um, uh, bouncers and bartenders present, um, if, you know, we can, um, cut a couple of them to at least uh you know cut down on our losses for the evening but if it's if it's a if it's a very slow night you you intend to still have the space open and available for people to go in there and listen to music or yes hang out yes sir so so both sides will be open but that that awning, days. yeah that that awning door will be locked so we can control the um you know the the influx of of customers so that way we're, we're able to positively identify each one that comes in okay okay thank you yes sir ms marshall am i muted no. no um i think i recall you must have been in the project report not in the management plan that you are not in fact allowed to install a door to close off the nightclub side from the restaurant side is that because because that has to be open for emergency exit is that true yes yes can, okay so yeah, you cannot can you so you can't i mean you could put a stanchion with a sign that says closed you know but you can't you can't physically isolate that space that's correct i see okay <clears throat> Rob? I just wanted to make the applicants aware that I'm taking notes of all the recommended updates and changes to the management plan, and I plan on sending it to them tomorrow. Um, just want to make that uh, clear so you know we don't lose track of anything. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments from the board members? If not, we'll open it up to uh, open the floor to public comments. Do we have anyone in attendance, Rob? No. I saw one person, but they're gone. Um, 
They disappeared a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Yep. Guess we're we're way too boring for them. <laughs> um. Well, then we have to go to the public meeting. Uh, since we've gone through the public comments, we'll now enter into the public meeting portion of the hearing. The public meeting allows the board members to deliberate on the petition before us. No public comment will be accepted and the applicant may speak only if answering questions from board members or providing further clarification. I'll ask the board members to provide their thoughts, comments, and opinions on the petition before us. Um, I'll provide mine. I think we have, if I'm correct, quite a lot of editing that needs to be done to the plan. I, I'm not quite certain if we're ready to vote tonight. Um, can I get other opinions from other bo board members, please? Mr. White. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, that would, I would share that sentiment. Um, but to the applicant, I would just say, I know this, you know, the whole process process can be frustrating. Um, but like the reason why I mentioned my issues on that is because you are going to be held to this. And from a business perspective, I want to make sure that you're there for as long as you want to be there. And as long as you're, you know, having a good time and making profit and that you're not having struggles with the town going forward. So I, but once again, I realize this is an arduous process, but it's one that I feel like we need to make sure we get right. We don't want to have to hold you to anything that is going to, uh, reduce on your margin significantly. So I, I think you have to be careful in what you, uh, in the material you give us. And I think that with the assistance of Mr. Wachilla and Mr. Mora, um, you can probably work through this pretty easily. I'm sorry that it's gonna take longer than you want it to, um, at least from my, my, my opinion. And I get the impression from Mr. White's also uh, any other comments from the board members? Is, is there any reason to begin talking about findings and conditions or, or should we wait until we have the revised management plan? I think we're going to have to wait until we have the advise, the revised plan. Okay. I don't think we can put findings and conditions on something that we haven't Thoroughly no, vetted. no, I, I didn't mean that we would vote on them, but no, I, other, I understand what other you're issues might come up, and I don't know. I'm happy I to think, wait. I think we have enough questions about exactly how the management will work. Um, if that's the case, uh, do we need to have a vote on this, Rob, and a date certain? To yes, you do. So. Down? We have to pick a date certain, and then um, we have to, the board has to vote to continue to that date certain, and then um, just go from there. Um, so as of right now, the next scheduled regular board meeting is next Thursday, the 25th, but then after that, it won't be until February 8th. February 8th already has another public hearing scheduled with another public meeting item on the way. After that's the 22nd, I don't know if the board, if for the sake of time, want to do it on off Whoa. Thursday, just so they can get in quicker and not have to wait like a month before they come back before the board. I mean, those potential dates could be the 31st or the 1st of February. It could be um, sometime next week. Um, I don't you, know if there's a date that folks have in mind. You said the next scheduled meeting is when? Uh, January 25th, um, there is a public hearing scheduled for that date. And I believe Mr. Sloviter might be unavailable for that date. I'm not available on the 25th, okay. but I'm perfectly willing to meet on an off night just mm -hmm. out of sympathy for this applicant mm -hmm. and, uh, and maybe a little kindness on our part. So I would... I'd be willing to do to do something. We've asked a lot of questions, and uh, I think it's more. I think what Mr. White referred to is 
really an important point here. You're going, the applicants are going to be held. If they say a minimum of seven bouncers, that's in black and white, and that's a minimum. And if they want the flexibility that it seems to me needs to be part of their management plan in order to respond efficient, effectively to, uh, <laughs> to Mr. White's 21 patrons, uh, then I, you know, I think once they clean that up, it shouldn't be too much more of a process. And if we if we lump them onto the solar night, that's going to kill somebody. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm I'm willing I'm willing to to have another meeting. I don't think it's going to be a three hour marathon whenever we meet. So it should be if the management plan is rewritten really well, we should be able to get through it pretty efficiently. So, Mr. Chair, I recommend the date of February first at six. Um, as a good alternative or a um, continued meeting date. That's an off Thursday. That's two weeks from tomorrow. Um, there's nothing else going on that week for the zoning board. I don't know if that date works for anybody. There are no 40 B. I'm sorry. Nope. So the 40 B doesn't come back again until February 15th. But I will double check that right now. Does that conflict with anybody else's schedule? I would be fine with that. I'm I'm available on the first. I can do that. Should should we assume that Mr. Judge will not be available then? <laughs> he's yeah, he, I, he will have missed two meetings. I don't think he can I, I think the four of us can handle it well enough, particularly since we're familiar with this and we know what the management plan uh should say. And um it's just a matter of uh, of seeing that it does say that. So it doesn't box you into a corner. Yeah. Can I just raise or just, just note oh. that um, since the mine school committee, our meeting last night because of the snow was postponed till tomorrow, a mm -hmm. Thursday. Hopefully that won't happen again. We'll just meet virtually, mm -hmm. but I would have to go. <laughs> <laughs> so and then that would would that leave enough people on the panel i'm not sure rob so um since mr judge was never in the first meeting or in this meeting he could technically fill in if somebody were to not be able to make it so we'd still have a, a full panel no matter what but sarah for now i would say put february 1st at six in your calendar and then just to confirm with the board we the next 40B meeting is on the 15th of February at six. I just double checked. So nothing's going to conflict with that night. Um, but thank you for bringing that up, Sarah. All right. So let's set a, the date certain will be February 1st, 2024. Uh, we need to vote on that. Uh, the chair votes aye. We need a second. We need a motion. Well, and a yes, we need a motion and a second. Thank you very much. Um, I move that we continue this meeting until February 1st. And I would love to second that emotion. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, the chair votes aye. Mr. White? Aye. Ms. Marshall? Aye. Mr. Sloviter? Aye. So we, uh, we therefore are moving this to February 1st. And we'll look forward to the revised uh, plan. Yes, Rob. So um, I'm going to call, Andrew, I'm going to give you a call tomorrow at some point. Uh, we can go through this together if you want and kind of iron out a lot of the details. Um, I have some some notes here from this discussion, and we can help you guys produce a final product that we can um, get you to move forward to the to the finish line. So do you guys have any questions for us or the for me, for Mr. Moore, or for the rest of the board? Um, not at this time. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I will skip. For my notes.
So I believe the next item, is there, Mr. Chair, is um, we have other business not anticipated within forty eight hours. Uh, so I believe you have to do general public comment before that, and then the um, other business not anticipated within forty eight hours. Are you suggesting that someone is coming? That a well, no, but uh, <laughs> we would at least acknowledge <laughs> that nobody's been here. <laughs> I guess I can go into the um, meeting schedule. Um, so I guess the first question I want to ask people, I already asked this the last meeting, but we do have a public hearing scheduled for next Thursday, January 25th. It's for the uh, Fort River Elementary School. They have to get a special permit for the zoning board in order to build a portion of the school in the flood, flood prone conservancy zoning district, um, the FPC it's called. And um, so far, I believe Mr. Sloveder said he was unavailable. Uh, Ms. Marshall, I know you're now on the school committee, so it might be a conflict of interest for you. I don't know. Did you ever hear back from the town clerk? Yeah, she said I should call the ethics commission, so I will do that tomorrow. Okay. Um, and then, and um, okay, sounds good. I know um, Mr. Henry can't make it and Mr. <laughs> Judge can't make it because he'll still be in Patagonia. Uh, so that's three people who won't be able to serve. Uh, Mr. White, I know you're in Ireland, but would you be available next Thursday at six or is that busy for you too? It, it's, I'll make it work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and what we'll about Ms. Greenbaum? Ms. Greenbaum, did you mention so her? I have to ask her still, but I imagine she'll say yes because she's very reliable. Uh, Craig, are you available next Thursday at six or are you busy? Uh, I, I'm looking. Okay. And we anticipate this will be the only hearing because they have to get a site plan review for the planning board um, for I, the majority of their project. So this will I'm be available. Quick. You're available? Okay, good. I'm so available. We, so pending hey, Hilda's hey, decision, we should have a full um, panel that date. And has so, that gone through the Conservation Commission? So, Rob, do you know if they have to go to the Conservation Commission for the school project? I wasn't aware of, of what that was going Yes, absolutely. Uh, I believe they have completed their conservation review, but we can confirm that with Aaron tomorrow, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw something on that. And to my knowledge, uh, they did actually, well, probably right now, they have a hearing with the planning board for their site plan review for the school. Um, and again, the site plan review regulates the use as well as the layout of the site. The only thing the zoning board would be concerned with is just allowing for construction within the FPC zone. So if anything, you're just approving their their ability to build in that zoning district, in addition to a giant pavilion structure, play fields, and other place type of structures. Rob, I don't know if you want to add anything else besides what I just mentioned. Uh, just that it's also including the waivers the modifications that are needed to the floor and height of the structure mm -hmm. that is limited to one story uh and some number of feet i think maybe 20 feet in the flood prone conservancy district so there's the construction in the district as well as waivers and modifications to the dimensional requirements thank you and then just quickly going through the schedule i know uh philip you look kind of tired so i don't want to keep you up too long <laughs> Yeah, it's quarter <laughs> after midnight. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, so really quickly, so February 1st was the date we just voted to schedule for this hearing, uh, continued. February 8th, uh, there is a variance application that will come before the board. Uh, it's for a property near Atkins Farm, uh, Hampshire College, building some residential dorms. The applicant's requesting um, variance relief from a mixed-use building that requires 30% of the first floor to be commercial space. And they're asking to shorten that to 10%. That is the petition for that date. The 15th is the continued hearing date for the Valley CDC 40B project. Um, and then on the 22nd, um, don't think I have anything scheduled at the moment, but that's, there is the potential for one or two applications to come before the board on that date. I I have a note on my calendar, maybe it's not accurate, that the 22nd of February is a hearing involving the solar project. Is yes, that... you're right. Yes. That Wait, there, that answer. is? It is, yes. So that is ah. the continued hearing date for the solar project. Um, and as of right now, we haven't received any new materials from them. 
but we will soon. Um, so, so far going out, I have nothing past the 22nd. Um, that's all I had for updates on the schedule. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, I would entertain a motion to close the meeting. Do I have so moved. Mr. Sloviter and do a second? I'd love a second. Yes. Uh, do we have two seconds? <laughs> uh, <laughs> the motion is not debatable and requires a roll call vote. The chair votes aye. Mr. White. Aye. <laughs> Ms. Marshall. Aye. Mr. Sloviter. Well, wait, let me think about this. All right. uh, aye. Aye. <laughs> Okay, we are officially adjourned.